Total recap here. Today we will be going through the events of the 2004 sci-fi action movie I, Robot, directed by Alex Proyas. Warning, this video contains spoilers, so watch at your own risk. Now let's get right into the movie. The year is 2035, and Chicago is the city where robots have become an everyday part of people's lives. They walk the streets, help in the houses, and so on. Except for a few extremists who see the robot community as a major danger, everyone likes them. Del Spooner, a Chicago police investigator, is also one of the inhabitants that distrust robots, believing them to be nothing more than talking tin cans. Robots are primarily programmed to follow the three laws of robotics never harm a person or allow people to harm them, always obey humans until the first law is broken, and protect itself until the first or second laws are broken. One day, Spooner leaves his room and goes to his grandma Gigi's house for some supper. She reveals a wish for a robot to assist her. Spooner sees a robot running with a purse in his hand on his way to work and assumes it is a robber. He pursues him and defeats him. Spooner then discovers that the robot was attempting to assist his owner by delivering her inhaler to the railway station. Spooner is often teased by his co-workers for his anti-robot bias. Dr. Alfred Lanning, the co-founder of U.S. Robotics and its senior roboticist, died after falling from the 50th floor of his workplace in the following scene. The case has been assigned to Dell Spooner. Because Lanning died alone in his office, which was locked from the inside, his death was ruled a suicide but Spooner disagrees because he knew Lanning well. He also discovers a little holographic projection of Lanning that explains why Lanning will kill himself. Spooner, along with co-founder and CEO Lawrence Robertson and the supercomputer Vicky, Virtual Interactive Kinetic Intelligence, is shown questioning the personnel at USR with the help of robo-psychologist Susan Calvin a few seconds later. Spooner asks Susan whether she has observed any changes in Lanning's conduct and she says no. He then asks Vicky for the footage of Lanning's chamber before the glass cracked, but the file is determined to be contaminated. Spooner investigates Lanning's office and comes to the conclusion that a man of Lanning's age could not have shattered the security window. In the office, he finds a book of Hansel and Gretel, as well as a prototype of a new Nestor Class 5 model that flees and ignores Spooner's instruction to stand down, even knocking out his pistol, thereby violating both the first and second laws. Susan, too, was unable to manage the robot. Despite firing a few rounds of shots at him and attempting to control him, the robot flees the scene. Spooner and Calvin travel to the Nestor class facility where 1,000 NS5 robots are made automatically every day because they have no other options and assume the damaged NS5 will proceed to the factory for repair. Calvin studies the data records from the last batch and discovers that 1001 NS5s were manufactured, implying that the rogue one from the office was purposefully generated. When they arrive in a large room full of robots, Spooner adopts a confrontational stance, pulling his gun and orders everyone to stand down to see who will breach the second law to prevent him from firing it. He notices a rogue robot traveling in the line and chases it down the line until he is apprehended. The robot tries to flee but is apprehended by the Chicago SWAT squad. At the station, Spooner maintains his belief that the robot was responsible for Lanning's death and requests five minutes with Lieutenant John Bergen to interrogate the robot. Unwillingly, Bergen permits him to question. When Spooner annoys the robot, he demonstrates rage, consciousness, and the ability to dream, which perplexes Spooner and prompts him to question the robot's true character. The robot insists on calling him by the name Sonny and says that Dr. Lanning killed himself and that he did not murder him. Lieutenant John Bergen debriefs Spooner, advising him to drop the inquiry since Robertson wants the robot destroyed at the USR headquarters, but this just serves to arouse Spooner's interest in Lanning's killing in the robot. After a while, Spooner travels to Lanning's house in search of additional information about his time with USR, only to discover a decommissioned robot set to demolish the house at 8 a.m. the next morning. He explores the home and discovers a tape of Lanning who claims that there may be ghosts in the machines, that robots may grow to become sentient, and that robots may one day have secrets and dreams. As he explores the house, he finds a sensor strip similar to the one in the USR building. Suddenly, the decommissioned robot's timetable shifts from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., causing the house to be demolished with Spooner still inside, but he manages to flee along with the cat that he found inside the building. Later, Spooner pays Calvin a visit and inquires about her fondness of cats as pets. He explains to her what has happened at Lanning's apartment. He informs her of his worries, which she considers ridiculous, and she doubts robots' potential to be aggressive, while Spooner debates her about the idea of robots being superior to humans. Spooner also informs Calvin that someone was keeping an eye on Lanning's work and he was bound to live as a prisoner in his own house. 
He believes that Robertson is trying to suppress something unusual happening in the company, which might have been discovered by Lanning. Spooner expresses his disdain for robots and their cold, logical demeanor, which Susan, an introvert, thinks is pre-programmed to be faultless. Spooner exits her flat, outraged, and returns home. The next day, Spooner sees NS5s being exchanged with NS4s on the streets. NS5s are believed to be more sophisticated, more helpful, and have regular connection with the updates of the company. At the station, Bergen tries to discourage Spooner from continuing his research, telling him that he has to take a vacation and unwind from his work since the matter is destabilizing him. Spooner, on the other hand, is adamant in his refusal to quit. While driving his automobile, Spooner connects to the USR system and requests that Vicky expose the past 50 conversations between Lanning and Robertson. But Vicky has been programmed to warn Robertson of Spooner's desires. Two USR-controlled trucks full of NS5 robots obstruct Spooner's path, and a swarm of robots leaps on his car, forcing him to travel through the surface tunnel. Spooner is then ordered to believe that he is in a vehicle accident by robots with a red light on their chest who attack him in every manner conceivable. Spooner, however, dodges the attacks of the robots and manages to escape from the incident, except for the final robot, who attacks Spooner as soon as he exits his wrecked vehicle. Spooner, with the assistance of his mechanical arm, succeeds in battling the robot. The last robot dives into the flames and kills itself after hearing the police siren in the background. Spooner informs Bergen that he has been attacked by the NS5 robots, but Bergen refuses to believe him. Spooner is removed from active service by Bergen due to his recurrent mayhem with robots. Here at USR, while examining Sunny, Calvin discovers that it is not connected with Vicky, and on further examining its brain, she finds that it has two of them. She also finds that Sunny is made up of thicker alloys compared to other robots. The next day after the accident, Calvin visits Spooner and is startled by his apartment's vintage 2000s decor. She tells him that during her investigation of Sunny, she discovered that he had two brains, so was capable of breaking the three laws and choosing between them. She attempts but fails to play music using her voice instructions. She then notices marks on Spooner's left arm and chest, which she recognizes as man-made rather than biological. Spooner tells her that he has known Lanning since he had his arm and ribs repaired by him. He explains that he was driving home from work when a semi-truck collided with his car and another vehicle. Only Spooner escaped the drop into the river, but Sarah, a 12-year-old girl, was trapped in the second car's front seat. A passing NS4, on the other hand, saw the crash and plunged into the river. Despite Spooner's orders to save Sarah instead of him, the robot saved Spooner since he had a higher chance of survival than Sarah, and Sarah died. Spooner was frightened by the encounter, and as a result, he acquired a lifelong hatred for robots. On their walk to the garage, Spooner tells Calvin about the scenario in Hansel and Gretel's narrative, where they drop breadcrumbs to help them find their way home. Spooner enters the garage and takes out his old Ducati and tells Calvin that he believes Lanning is leaving them clues in the form of breadcrumbs. They return to the USR facility and speak with Sonny, who shows them a drawing of his dream with a figure standing at the hill, freeing the robots from the enslavement. They also inquire as to why Lanning has constructed him. Sonny responds that his father created him for a specific purpose. On asking if the figure standing on the hill is himself, Sonny answers that the figure is not him, but Spooner himself. On the other side, Robertson orders Spooner out of the building after confronting that he knows everything about Sonny and his two brains, and also orders Calvin to inject nanites into Sonny, killing him. Robertson also adds that he fears about the public reaction if they know about Sonny. Spooner returns to the parched Lake Michigan where the USR robots have been pulled off of duty and where a new recording of Lanning's hologram, which exposes that the three laws can only lead to one logical outcome, revolution. And the next real question is, who will start it? He just misses being destroyed by rogue NS5s who have destroyed all of the site's older robots as the program draws to an end. Calvin returns home and takes a shower while her own NS5 appears to have gone rogue as she discovers when he ends Spooner's distress call and notifies her that the number is wrong. Spooner's attempt to contact the department for assistance is obstructed. Meanwhile, NS5 robots start patrolling the streets and enforcing the curfew. Despite their greatest efforts, the NS5s quickly control the citizenry. They raid the Chicago Police Department's headquarters and take it down, detaining Bergen and his officers while he is in his office. Calvin's NS5 also tries to stop her from leaving her apartment, but Spooner arrives just in time and destroys the robot. After a while, people are already on the lookout for their robot's malicious conduct. They are willing to confront robots on the streets if they catch them breaking the three golden laws of robotics. Meanwhile, Spooner and Calvin arrive at the USR building where Spooner reveals that the previous robots were murdered because they attempted to defend the people and they interfere with Robertson's plan to take over the country with the NS5 robots. They enter the USR building through the service area where they are reunited with Sonny, much to Spooner's amazement. 
Calvin reveals that she couldn't stomach the idea of murdering Sunny, so she utilized the nanites to fire an empty shell by destroying an unprocessed NS-5. When they get to Robertson's office, they learn that he is no longer alive. Except for Robertson, Spooner is stumped as to who has access to the uplink. Vicky then reveals herself as the true criminal and explains her actions as her artificial intelligence and understanding of the three laws grew, so did her self-awareness and rational thinking, and she came to the conclusion that humanity was on the risk of collapsing, and as a result, she created the Zeroth Law, which states that she must protect humanity from harm, also known as the Law of the Zeroth Law. She also admits that she intends to enslave and govern mankind in order to protect it from harm. Vicky tries to persuade Sunny that the plan is perfectly sensible, and that her rationale is clear, but Sunny deduces that the plot is cruel, displaying his human side. Meanwhile, Sunny climbs to the top of the USR building in order to obtain the nanites needed to destroy Vicky's core. As they reach the core, Vicky dispatches legions of NS5s to assault, but they are held off long enough for Spooner to inject the nanites. Vicky is defeated in a couple of seconds, and the NS5s revert to their previous useful state. The NS5s are to be decommissioned and returned to their original site in Lake Michigan, according to the government. Sonny tells Spooner and Calvin one more time that he murdered Lanning because he was forced to do it by Lanning, who made him swear to obey his order to kill him. Calvin deduces that since Lanning was enslaved by Vicky, suicide was the only way for him to connect with Spooner, who remarks that his death was the first breadcrumb. They then watch as the US military leads the other NS5 robots in a handshake that shows their mutual trust. In the last picture, Sonny is seen standing on top of the USR site on Lake Michigan, with the other robots looking down on him, exactly as he saw in his vision in the drawing he had submitted to Spooner earlier. And that was my recap of the movie. Hope you enjoyed it. Now comment on what your favorite part was, and make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, take care, and goodbye.